Good morning, everyone. Uh, as Ken mentioned, I'm Norma Click. I'm the director for Airside Landside with planning and development at Hartsfield Jackson. Uh, we currently have a lot of exciting capital development going on at uh, Hartsfield Jackson right now. I'm sure some of you all may have seen it on the AJC, just did a spread talking about um, what our future is going to look like. And probably the most exciting project we have on the civil side is our new end around taxiway. And uh, we, are the, we were the first ones to have an end around taxiway in the United States in 2007. Currently, Dallas, Fort Worth, Detroit, and Atlanta are the only three airports in the country that have an end around taxiway. Dallas, Fort Worth just opened up their second one, and we're coming close to the finish line of opening up our second one, which would make us only one of two airports in the country with an, a second end around taxiway. So this end around taxiway is going to be 5,600 feet, just a little over a mile. It uh, encompasses about 53 acres, so it is a lot of real estate. Uh, we started with a parking lot, a parking lot that's probably been there 30, 40 years type thing. Um, the reason this is so important to the airport, being the world's busiest airport, we, uh, there's a, a safety aspect of it because we have five parallel runways, a lot of aircraft. We currently have about 750 aircraft a day that cross our longest runway. So building this provides an operational efficiency and also improves the safety. Uh, it reduces departure delays. So it is a big benefit and this is gonna have a global impact for us as well as really being able to show our operational efficiency and our stakeholders definitely appreciate it as well. So the planning of this started several years ago and right now we have an 18 month contract we have one prime uh, contractor, 17 subcontractors, which I'm pleased to say 39% of those subcontractors are minority contractors. Um, Hartsfield Jackson, just like the city of Atlanta, we're very focused in and supporting minority participation at the airport. And we've got a great team of contractors out there that are well versed in doing civil projects on our airfield, which I promise you is no easy feat working within an expedited time period on that airfield. Uh, we had about 15, or, yeah, 15 different activities, uh, pretty much every single one of these phases. So we have a total of seven phases. They're right off the end of our uh, longest, busiest runway. Um, and the shortest one went from 10 feet to the longest one at 365 days, which is the purple one. The greenish one that gets closer to our runway, we're actually shortening the runway by 800 feet. And that phase is 45 days. So it's a major impact to our airline stakeholders uh, by reducing our longest runway. And so we have a requirement that they must complete that work within that time period. And we also, uh, we have liquidated damages on the table for this. So it is uh, definitely a high energy environment doing work along our airfield. Um, but we are getting ready to start our final phase and we are on track to be able to finish this work by October 31st. So we're very excited about that. Um, this is what uh, the project currently looks like as of a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we did have major utilities that ran right through this entire area. So we've had to coordinate with Georgia Power, Atlanta Gas Light, AT&T, the FAA, City of Atlanta Watershed, to be able to relocate all of those utilities around the actual taxiway, and we're putting them outside of our security fencing area. Uh, a lot of uh, quantity of work went on here. We've got about 350,000 uh, cubic yards of embankment. Our taxiways range from 18 to 20 inch thick Portland concrete cement. Uh, this one we're doing 20 inches and we've got 35,000 square yards. So this is a, quite a bit of work for the 17 contractors that we have out there. And uh, we've been moving along very well with this. The big thing to share today though are the challenges, just like any other project, and I'm sure pretty much what everybody's experiencing, um, we all have a lot of challenges. And probably the biggest one we compete for is qualified labor. Um, it was a little bit easier and probably taken more for granted prior to COVID, but since COVID, uh, a lot of changes for everybody. A lot of folks have retired. A lot of folks have not come back to work. Qualified labor is probably our greatest challenge because this is a more specified and specialized work. Even though it is civil, it is on an airfield environment and we have criteria and requirements to be able to come in and do this type of work within the shorter period of time. And so it definitely makes a challenge, even on the owner side. 
uh, for our construction management team, being able to maintain a qualified labor force for that. So that's something that we continuously meet with our contractor, our design groups, to try to figure out how to best grow our labor that we do have, and then the people that are the more seasoned, experienced people, they're spending a lot more time basically growing, mentoring, spending time in the field to make sure that we are getting the quality product. So it's a challenge not only for the contractor, but the owner as well as the design team and any of the supporting agencies that are involved in this. Um, cement is uh, the primary part of what we do. Um, dirt, we can pretty much find, but cement, um, for anybody who's in that business right now, uh, you're, you share my pain as to how difficult it is. Um, but what we do is we really focus on partnering with our contractor and the cement shortage that we currently have. The contractor that's doing this work is doing three other projects here at the airport. So we've had to balance out. And in some cases, we resequence activities and work with the contractor, in some cases giving them a little bit more time to be able to do the work that um, is required. So the contractor has a schedule that he goes through um, to be able to pave a certain quantity every night. So his delivery is coming in each day, they're paving that night. They don't have a delivery, they don't pave, and then they basically activities are worked around that because that's the primary focus of where we're looking to get to is being able to place concrete. Uh, material delays, the electronic components, that has been a major source for us as well. We have FAA equipment that we're relocating, whether it be switch gears, panel boards. Um, some of these things we've had anywhere from 40 to 50 week delays. So we've had to sit down and go, how do we work around this? How do we end up putting, uh, placing some of the installation of this work at a later point in time? And we have some pieces of FAA equipment we're actually going to leave in place. We've built the new facilities. We've got everything up and ready. And then basically when we get these electrical components in, we'll install them and then we'll start the transition. But it won't happen until after the taxiway. So flexibility has really been key for us um, and the contractor's shown great flexibility. So um, that's one of the things we've had to look at. It's because it's become harder. Um, flexibility has kind of been the key to helping us find solutions and being able to move forward. Uh, increased costs, that's another thing. I mean, every, I'm sure everyone has seen this. Um, not so, you know, fortunately for us, not so much for the contractor. We do have language in our contract that does not allow for escalation. But, and that has been the standard on our contract for years now. But because of COVID and everything that's going on, we are even evaluating, do we take a break from that? Do we put um, other opportunities in there that will help uh, minimize or mitigate some of those challenges? So even though we may not have made certain changes, we are definitely sitting down having conversations. We're listening to the contractors. Um, we're getting their feedback. We're trying to do everything we can to have a better understanding of what they go through and the impact to their company because our, one of our goals is we want to grow the companies that come out there but we never want to put anybody out of business so while we have contracts we also look at how do we go how do we improve going forward one of the things we cannot control is the weather and uh, I think in August uh, we had a weather uh, wetter than normal uh, month that has provided a lot of challenges when you're doing over 300,000 cubic yards of embankment um, and we've really had to work through that. We've, we bring in lime now. We look for opportunities from other resources. So the, the big thing that we really look to between ourselves as the owner and the contractor is how do we partner because our goal is to get to the finish line with a successful project. And there are times that we may make some concessions and we've had such a good partner in the contractor that they've made some concessions as well and it's really that level of effort that helps us successfully get a project. Um, because our schedule's tight, everything we do out at Hartsfield-Jackson on the airfield are very tight schedules. We have pre-qualified paving contractors that are experienced in doing expedited work come out. Um, and so those are, a lot, those are all the challenges we go through, and especially on a project this size. And as I made mention before, um, what helps us get solutions, what helps us get to the finish line with having that product is uh, partnering. Um, it is, uh, we try to make sure that we create an environment of we're going to help them get across the finish line and we're going to help get a successful project at the same time. 
and the contractors are more receptive to that. Um, and they've become very helpful in trying to help us understand what it is that they need to do. Um, one of the items that we do add in our contract is a contingency allowance. Um, that is something that is a little unusual for airports, but all of our contracts have a 10% contingency allowance in there because it is, we do not have a project that does not have some sort of unforeseen issue, some sort of change in condition. This allows us to be able to address these issues quickly, work with the contractor on what's an appropriate cost to be able to resolve these issues, and then move forward with the schedule. So that's been a huge help with us um, being able to resolve things and not drag projects out. Because every day that we delay any work, that is an impact to all of the airlines especially with Delta, with all the flights that they have coming in and out of Atlanta. And, and flexibility is really the final thing I'll leave everybody with. It's, it's important to be flexible, especially in this time. We are not back to a time where things, it's business as usual. And we don't know if we'll ever get back there. We may all be looking at a new way of doing business, and it's how do we do business to the best of our ability, as well as being able to get the products and the, the results that we're all looking for at the end of the day. So. Um, that's pretty much what we have for today. Um, oops, really want to thank everybody. Um, is there anyone that has any questions? Because I think I'm wrapping up a few minutes early. Okay, terrific then. I think uh, we're moving on to a break now. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. So all of these, um, this project as well as the previous uh, end around taxiway, those are federally funded through the FAA. So yes, we did go through an environmental study. Um, there were years of studies that went on for this particular work. Um, that is one of the things, by being able to continue around, we're reducing uh, aircraft sitting at the runway waiting to cross. You know, there's a fuel efficiency improvement there. They're getting to the gate quicker. So there, there are definitely environmental benefits to having an end-around taxiway, as well as just the operational efficiency to it. So absolutely, yes. Do you have the, the numbers? Not on the top of my head. If you, um, if, well, I'll speak to you afterwards, and then I'll provide, I can get you that information as well. So it, it's been several years since we've done that, so I uh, may have to go through the files to find that one. Does anyone else have any questions? All right, well, great. Thank you, and I believe we are moving on to a break for right now. Y'all have a great day. <laughs>